Is that what they do for like smoke grenades? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. No, they use something Ooh. called and, um, uh, because of that catalyst. Very, very hot. In fact. Of these three solutions, you don't really know what's inside there, but that's okay. Sometimes life is a mystery. So then what we have to do is then add them in that same order, A to B, and then add C to A and B. So first, I'm going to pour in A. And all I've got up here is a little bit of a magnetic stirring bar on a hot plate. Some of you guys have probably used this before. I'm going to add B. Nothing's happening yet. But now what happens, watch what happens when I add C. Wait for it. Excited, they emit light. Depending on the properties of the substance, they can emit light of different colors. So by adding lithium, we should get a very distinct color of light produced. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to kind of coat the bottle with it. And this one takes a little bit because this is a very finicky demonstration. I have to get that ethanol to vaporize, okay? which means I don't want the liquid form, I want the gaseous form. That's why I'm spinning it like this. I want it to coat the bottle, and then hopefully I want the warmth of the room temperature bottle to cause that ethanol to evaporate. Because ethanol is very similar in terms of behavior to rubbing alcohol. And you know if you dip your finger in rubbing alcohol, it feels cold. That's just because it wicks away heat from your hand because it evaporates the liquid. Okay? And when you cause something to evaporate, you generally remove heat from whatever causes it to evaporate. So we're going to take this bottle now. I think it's pretty well filled with gas. And I don't want any of this excess. You say, well, Mr. Cook, you're throwing away all the good stuff. Not really. We don't want the liquid. We're concerned with the vapors, the gas. That's what we want. Okay? So all this excess is nothing more than something that's going to hinder the reaction. Okay? It's going to get in the way. Hey, get out of there. Now, for your safety, there's a blast shield here. I'm trying to again use the candle science, and I'll do this one. Oh, my candle's about gone to play. <laughs> I think I might be able to get it. Why not? 
make use of what we have available to us. So I'm going to let this candle burn. This is a newbie, so we've got to kind of let it get broken in here. We've got to start to vaporize that wax. There we go. There we go. Now, what you're going to want to pay attention to is when I take the candle attention. and I put it to the mouth of the foosh bottle. Now, I hope this works. If it doesn't, I'll have all of y'all to deal with it. Oh, 
Keep doing it. One more time. distance between those fine particles of dust. Let's try it again. Ready? One, two, opa! And one last time. This is known as luminol, and this is a luminol reaction, where we take luminol with hydrogen peroxide, and it, it, one of the byproducts is this blue-green colored light. So that's luminol. Calcium carbide looks like nothing more than rocks. It doesn't look special. It doesn't look like there's anything really interesting about it. I'm just trying to open it up now. So it to it. If you look at it, it just looks like pebbles. So I'm going to take two generous spoonfuls, and I'll leave, if you guys want to see what it looks like, it just looks like pebbles. Really, it's nothing more than if you took a handful of gravel out of the alley, it looked like that. Okay? So I'm going to take two scoopfuls of this gravel, this calcium carbide. 
The only other thing I need is my self-carving actuator, which goes in the back of the pump. So here we go. Two scoops. Now, as soon as I add that to the water, it starts to produce a very, very flammable gas. That gas is called acetylene gas. Acetylene gas is used in welding torches. Reacts with oxygen in a very predictable manner, thank goodness, because I'm behind the blast shield, you're protected by it. Now, I need to give this about 10 or 15 more seconds, which means what's really happening right now is the calcium carbide's reacting with the water. The more it reacts, the more acetylene gas is produced. The more acetylene gas, the more blah blah boom that we're going to have to carve our pumpkin. Now, remember what we said when you might expect a loud noise, how to prepare yourself? You may want to do that here as well. So if you cup your hands, okay? Now, don't look away, because this is what you've been waiting for. At least I hope it works. Ready? One, two, three. Oh! generous scoops of calcium carbide. Now as soon as I start to add that calcium carbide into the water, it's going to start to form acetylene gas. That acetylene gas is what I'm going to use to carve the pumpkin. I want to put the lid on. Now here's the thing with this reaction. You have to wait until the proportions are just right or else the pumpkin won't carve itself. Okay? So we're just going to wait a little bit. Every second that we wait, more of that cow, more of that cow, so that my little lighter can fit right in the back. Now, how long has that been? About 45 seconds? Yeah, it's been 50 seconds since you added it. Okay, I'm going to hold my hand tightly. Now, I might recommend this. We're going to go on threes. One, 